I am Dr. Sri Ram Ramalingam, Medical Director, Pranya Netralaya, located at Artinagar, specialized in cataract, refractive, glaucoma, and squint surgery. Former consultant at Shankar Netralaya, Chennai. Normally, in our eyes, excessive tears from the eye are drained from the medial or what is called the nasal side of the eye through a passage which is called as a nasolacrimal passage which has got a small duct which is called as a nasolacrimal duct. As we blink, the excessive tears from the eye is pumped into this nasolacrimal passage and the excess tears enters into the nose and then into the throat. That is the reason why occasionally when some eye drops are applied in the eye, one may get a bitter taste in the throat. This is because the excessive drops or excessive tears is drained into the nose and then into the throat. Occasionally, this passage can get blocked. There are various stages where it can get blocked. Occasionally, it can occur in children. They are called as congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction. In this, the passage is not opened. So, a child is brought to the surgeon by complaining of excessive tearing from the eye. If one looks into the eye, there is only excessive watering. There is no discharge or there is no redness in the eye. This usually says that the passage is blocked. In the initial stages, this can be easily controlled by doing what is called as a massage. A properly done massage, it has to be done at least two to three times in a day, at least five minutes in a proper manner the passage usually opens out. If the passage is not open, even after the child has passed one and a half years of age, then one need to do what is called as probing and syringing. This is usually done under general anesthesia. A small anesthesia is given and the nasal passage is dilated and syringing is done. Usually this opens out. But most of the time, if the proper massage is done, a child may not require a probing and syringe. In adults, this passage can get blocked because of pure hygiene or because of various infections. This is, can be divided into two types. One is called as an acute dacrocystitis, where there is an acute pus formation in the lacrimal passage. And this requires an immediate treatment in the form of painkillers, antibiotic eye drops, antibiotic oral tablets. This may take a few days along with warm compressors. This may take a few days to resolve. But this can keep repeating again because once the passage has got blocked, one can get repeated infections. In order to prevent repeated infection, one need to go in for a permanent treatment what is called as a dacrocystorhinostomy. If the passage gets blocked, one can get repeatedly watering and infection. This is called as a chronic dacrocystitis. Chronic dacrocystitis also requires a surgical intervention which is called as dacrocystorhinostomy. Here, basically, the blocked passage, there is a passage that is blocked but tears are not entering the nose. An artificial new passage is created for the excessive tears from the eye to drain into the nose. This is what is called as a dacrocystorhinostomy, which can be done externally from the skin surface, which is called as an external dacrocystorhinostomy or what is called external DCR, or it can be done through the nose which is called as an endoscopic dacrocystorhinostomy. Endoscopic dacrocystorhinostomy can also be done either by an eye surgeon or occasionally it is done even by an ENT surgeon. Nowadays, lasers are being used to create an artificial passage. So this is called as a laser dacrocystorhinostomy. So in all the procedure, an artificial passage is created bypassing the blockage and a new passage is created from ex for the excessive tears to drain from the eye towards the nose. So this passage is called as a dacrocystorhinostomy procedure. But one needs to a regular follow up so that occasionally this passage can also be blocked. During the initial stages, your surgeon may do repeated syringing 
changing is nothing but flushing water or flushing fluid through the eye into the passage so that it keeps patent. This is what is called as a dacrocystorhinostomy. The various modifications available for dacrocystorhinostomy depending upon where the blockage is, something called as intubation dacrocystorhinostomy, where a silicon tube may be passed. So depending upon the passage where it is blocked, a surgeon may decide whether you require just a dacrocystorhinostomy procedure or it has to be combined with intubation, whether it can be done externally or it has to be done through the endoscopic depends upon the surgeon. So treatment for chronic DAC or chronic dacrocystitis is only dacrocystorhinostomy surgery. If it is not done, a person can repeatedly keep getting infection. So permanent treatment is better to get it done a dacrocystorhinostomy procedure.